Howdy again, this is Tubal Kane. The subject of today's video is RPMs and how to determine the RPM or the speed of a lathe or a drill press or whatever. And I have in my possession seven different devices for measuring RPM, so I'm going to go through all of those. But what brought all of this up is that I just bought a used drill press and there is no RPM speed chart on it and uh, I'm going to make a chart and that is why I thought of this video. This is a drill press that I recently purchased. Uh, it's probably built in the 50s or 60s and I want to show you some of the fine points uh, about that drill press but first let me introduce my grandson who is here uh, watching. Step up to the plate. Hi, I'm um, Tubal Cain's grandson. My name is Jordan and sometimes I'm also known as Tubal Cain Jr. Thank you, Jordan. You can't have enough drill presses. This is actually my fourth floor model drill press, and I have several smaller ones, but I like to dedicate them to a job. But the reason I bought this one is that it has the nice production table with the coolant trough and T-slots. And believe it or not, even though this thing is at least 50 years old, there's no holes drilled into the table. That is very unusual in itself. nicely built it's uh, a duro now I've heard of their table saws and woodworking machinery I didn't know that they made drill presses but it's a it's a pretty nice machine and it is a half inch chuck I don't like the motor on it I'll probably change that I rewired everything and there is a uh, built-in work light right up here into the casting where I'm pointing so it's a nice little machine. Another thing I like about it is if you look at the base, heavy cast iron base, it's quite wide. Now if you look at some of the imports that you buy at the farm stores, you're going to find that their whole base is uh, less wide than the machine portion here. They don't understand that when a man stands in the wind, he spreads his legs a little bit. This 15 inch drill press has a cast iron guard. The guard itself for the belts must weigh 25 pounds and I was quite fearful of this dropping on my uh, hands so in an effort to protect you from the belts uh, we have a risk of this heavy uh, cast iron guard but I love it because you know darn well that on a modern one it would be stamped sheet metal or probably plastic. They don't make them like this anymore. But the reason I'm making this video is that they're are uh, three step pulleys on this machine one two and then the third one behind this guard and two belts and I need to determine what the speeds are so I'm going to do that actually off camera but I'm going to introduce you to all the different RPM gauges or tachometers or speed counters that I have to show you uh, uh, j just to show them off. Quiet on the set please. Let me introduce you to the seven different speed counters that I have here. Some of these uh, I favor more than others. This is a strobe light, which we will uh, demonstrate here presently, and it's 110 volt. Here's a little blue point tachometer used more in automotive work. It requires batteries, which is a big uh, negative to me. Here's another electronic speed counter. This is the only one that I'm actually not going to use, but it does work. But it actually is made to check the RPM of little uh, model airplane engines, so it's, uh, it's best for higher speeds. The standard Sterrett speed counter, RPM counter, revolution counter, whatever they call it, and many other companies made these as well, but Sterrett must have made a million of them. This uh, little German-made uh, uh, speed counter relies on vibration frequencies and uh, you might get a kick out of that if you haven't ever seen one. Sometimes used for small engines. This is my favorite, made in Germany. has all kinds of different wheels and attachments and you can uh, measure RPM and surface feet per minute. And then of course here is the ubiquitous Warner, Stuart Warner tachometer. It's a wonderful instrument. Most of you probably have one of these. They also made a million of these. It came in a tin can. Imagine that. And I still have the lid. 
when I get ready to measure all of these uh, different step pulley speeds, I'll do that off camera, but here's how I'm going to do it. I'm holding the Stuart Warner tack in a small piece of stock that has a center hole, and there's a rubber tip on that. And then since I don't want to have to stand on my head, I put a mirror there, and you can see that we're right about at 500 RPM. 500 RPM. I think I'll use the Sterrett speed counter next. The speed counter comes with several different tips that can go on here. This is rubber, but the rubber is harder than a rock, it's so old. I like this one to go into center holes. They also made an attachment with a wheel on it to measure uh, surface feet per minute. But it's, they made several models of these uh, Sterrett's, but this particular one you can set it to zero. Some of them you cannot. You know there's a worm and a worm gear in here. So I'm going to set it to zero. And then each full revolution is 100 RPM. Now the reason for these little buttons here is that in the olden days men were often checking the speed of line shafts and other things above their head and they would be walk watching their pocket watch with one eye and then, uh, or both eyes I guess, but uh, since they couldn't look up over their head at this they could feel the little bump come around with their thumb and they could count that way. Watch the red hand. I had zeroed out the speed counter and I'm only going to measure it for a half minute then I'll double it to save time for this demonstration. That was 100 and I'll pull it out of there when the red hand is on the bottom. 200 And it just went a little bit by uh, 260. So we double that and we got 520 plus oh another 10 is about 530 RPM. The stroboscope is nothing more than a strobe that we can adjust the uh, frequency on the bulb. Now it was Harold Edgerton from Nebraska who invented the strobe back in the late 30s or early 40s, and I think it was the University of Nebraska. And uh, he was the one that uh, pioneered high-speed photography with the use of this. And if you might remember, some of his pictures were uh, somebody shoots an apple, and uh, you can see the apple exploding with the bullet going through it and all of that. That's uh, Harold Edgerton's work. Now on the back side of the stroboscope, we have an on and off switch high low range and then uh, this big knob changes the frequency of the light and here's a fine adjustment for it I'll turn it off now you probably are most familiar with a strobe light uh, as far as a timing light for a car is concerned but they don't much use them anymore because the car's computer sets the timing I'm over at my big Rockwell drill press and I've affixed a piece of that reflective tape onto the chuck. And I will now uh, turn the machine on and let's check the RPM using the strobe light. Now you can see the tape coming around and it appears to stand still. But of course it's not standing still. Notice that the hole in the chuck also and the gear appears to be standing still. But in fact, the speed is 803 RPM. Using the fine adjustment, I can kind of move it back and forth. I'm standing before the Craftsman grinder, and you might be saying, why don't you turn it on? Well, it is on. Notice the chalk line that I've made across one of the wheels. I'm able to move it back and forth by adjusting the strobe. Now look at the uh, right-hand wheel. You can see that it is moving. Kind of fun to play with. It's very deceptive. You'd almost like to touch it with your finger, but of course it would take your finger off. 
because in fact the speed is 3591 and it of course is a 3600 rpm motor which most grinders are pretty awesome huh this is the blue point electronic tachometer and it pretty much uh, agrees with the stroboscope at about 780 rpm and in order to use it we have to use their reflective tape that was uh, provided with the uh, instrument that is not just a piece of white label that's reflective tape this is kind of a unique instrument and actually it's about the simplest here and they make one of these also that looks kind of like a tire gauge something like this and all we have is a piece of wire painted white on the end and at some point while adjusting the length of it it's going to start to vibrate and then you read the scale on here and you got your RPM and it reminds you of an old Buick you know at certain RPM or if it's sitting there idling and you watch the antenna you would see the antenna do that and sometimes it would just change and if you rev the engine up it would uh, vibrate at uh, a different uh, uh, frequency or a different RPM. So let's try this on the Craftsman grinder. Now there's plenty of vibration on that machine so it's going to work quite nicely on the 6 inch grinder. Now continuing on the Craftsman grinder with a more primitive method of checking the RPM but yet quite effective and accurate. I'll put this device anywhere on the grinder at all and adjust it back and forth until I get the maximum vibration right about there and then read the scale and you're going to see that it's also right about 3600 RPM remember the story about the Buick and if you would change the length of the antenna on the Buick to get better radio reception it would uh, vibrate in uh, at different RPMs. Alright, here's a little German tachometer. I'm going to put it into a center hole. And there are several different ranges on here and I've already selected the correct range and pushed the red button and it holds the setting. And there we are at about 360 RPM. And when I look at the variable speed over here, that's approximately where we are set. Maybe this, this reads a little bit closer to 400 RPM, but it's in the ballpark. I've changed the range on the instrument now to a higher range, and watch me speed it up to 1,000 RPM. instrument reads about a thousand, but the actual uh, calibration on the machine is about 10.50. Boy, I really like this tachometer, and it'll read out in RPMs on the outer black scale, and the inner red scale is for feet per minute. You know, the Germans don't miss a trick. Look at all the extra attachments that they got in here, and directions and everything. But then again, I guess they did screw up. The foam padding in there disintegrated. Did you ever uh, open up a micrometer or something that you haven't had open for years and the foam is disintegrated but yet it sticks to the instrument? Okay, I've got a piece of uh, material in here that is two different diameters just to show you the effect of RPM on surface feet per minute. And I've set the lathe such that it's at the lowest speed right now in direct drive, but the uh, feet per minute, if we were cutting, is about 105 or 107 feet per minute on the small diameter. However, as the diameter increases, watch how much the uh, uh, feet per minute increases. It almost pegs the needle at about 155 feet per minute, so you can see where you need to slow a machine down when you're cutting 
large diameters over small diameters. I am standing reverently before my metal cutting bandsaw. And you know, I always try to keep uh, a metal cutting saw at about 100 feet per minute. That means there's 100 feet of blade passing through the work in a minute. And it's very easy to check with this instrument, but of course we don't want to touch that little rubber wheel on the teeth, so I'm toward the back edge. And on the red scale, I'm measuring right at 100 feet per minute. I have shown that in uh, another video, but I thought I'd run it again. I hope you enjoyed this little video where I'm showing off some of my toys. And uh, be sure and watch my many, many other videos. Subscribe to my channel. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.